look at 10 things that could make any video game good. Number one, really long games. When people want to play a game, they usually want something that's going to pass the time, obviously. So probably one of the best things to do is make a really long game. Number two, what you want to do is maybe include a lot of side quests. For example, look at Final Fantasy VI, for example. You know, it was the, the original Final Fantasy VI, not Final, or Final Fantasy III on the Super Nintendo, but... But it's really Final Fantasy VI. The one with Terra, Terra Locke, the Moogles, you get what I'm saying, Kafka, and all that. But, but anyways, the reason why Final Fantasy VI was such a great game, because it had a long story, it had way too many side quests, and it had too many boss battles, you know. There was a lot of different dungeons you could go to, different side quests, you could play them out of order. I mean, it was just a game that was really cool in the 90s. It, was, it really was. You know, games like Chrono Trigger were even... Ironically, Chrono Trigger was even better, and that game didn't even have any, didn't have as close to as many side quests as Final Fantasy VI did. But anyways, that's another thing I want to mention. Really long stories. Number three. Because when you think about... Wait, did, did I say stories? Well, okay, how about this? Just really, like, an open amount of characters, you know. If you, ha if you have many options in a video game, like take the Pokemon series, for example. Why is the Pokemon series, I mean, even though, okay, yeah, the story really is kind of getting, the, it really, for the most part, they recycle certain things over and over again. You know, you play the game, you go to gym leaders, you beat them, you go to the Elite Four, you win, be the champion, you win, and, and there's usually other things involved, too. But what, what made the Pokemon series so successful? How many different Pokemon you could catch and how many of them you could use? So, like, well, where are we up to 721 now? Plus the Omega Evolutions. So, like, take, for example, Pokemon Mystery Dungeons, like, Super Mystery Dungeons. You know, that game is, you know, like, every time you go back to the same level, it's different every time you go in it, even though there's certain things that don't change about it. But, like, my point is, you know, knowing that there's, like, 721 Pokemon, even though really there's only 720, my point is, you have, that, that's, quite, that's quite a lot of stuff to gamble with, 720 different things to possibly choose from. That's pretty interesting, if you think about it. So, if you want to make a really, really well-designed game, you should really look at, you know, how many different possibilities you're willing to put into a game. Give people choices, is what I'm saying. Number four, what can make a game really fun is, you know, try to make sure it doesn't have as many glitches, something that's going to really ruin the experience, you know. Pretty self-explanatory. Number five, you know, make sure the game is balanced and difficulty. Uh, games like Perfect Dark for the N64, probably the hardest game I've ever played because the enemy accuracy is just really hard. FPS games, first-person shooter games, aren't really that hard in general. But if well done designed, they can be one of the greatest and hardest games that anyone has ever laid face to the earth. And if you haven't played Perfect Dark for the N64, the Xbox remake or rare replay version, I highly recommend it. It's a great game. Um, number six. What I recommend you do in a video game is, you know, make... Okay, how do you do this? Um, make sequels. Make a lot of sequels to games. Again, Final Fantasy is a perfect example. I mean, in Mario and Zelda and every other game that has, like, maybe 20-something games in their entire franchise in the last 20 years. You know, the best way to put something out there is to make a series that people love. But make sure that the individual games are good. You know, the Zelda games are all good. The Mario games are all good. I mean, yeah, some people are getting sick of them, but, you know, but every time Nintendo comes up with them, you know, there's usually, I mean, yeah, some things never change, but at the same time, though, there's usually enough stuff to keep people busy. You know, like, for example, Mario Maker. It was a low-budget program that Nintendo made but so many people were able to customize their own levels, and there's like over 10 billion levels that you could possibly play. I mean, I'm not sure if that is true, but but man, that's that's pretty impressive let me tell you, for a video game. It's a pretty simple idea, and yeah, it explains why that Minecraft managed to get where it was at. You know, like all the endless possibilities, and, and that's another one. You know, even though Minecraft isn't okay, sure, it might not be the best game ever, but you got to admit though, the endless possibilities that you can expand upon, that's why that game got so far. I mean, it might, again, it might not be, the, the graphics might not be everything, but, you know, why do so many people like it? Because you can literally play with so many people online, you can go to different areas, and there's even people that have found ways to, like, build stuff, and it's crazy, <laughs> it really is. Like, these really, it kind of, like, you're, like, you're building out of Legos and all that, you know, but it's pretty cool what you come up with. It's really awesome. Um, so number s what are we at, seven now? What can make a game very useful and unique is just 
be creative, you know, do something that's never been done before, you know, that's how you can also be very successful. Number eight, you know, let the people, let the fans play it. You know, we live in a day and age where people like YouTube, Twitch TV, especially Twitch TV, people can make a video game, put it on the internet, be fans, you know. To make a very successful video game, you've got to have an audience. Otherwise, your game could be very successful, or maybe it doesn't have a lot of people that have played. Um, so, yeah. So, number nine... Uh, out of all the video games that I've ever seen that really got underrated, you know, advertisement. You know, I mean, okay, yeah, I know pretty much getting your fans to tell you about it is pretty much the same thing, but but make sure that people are under the, the they get the good impression of it. Like, you know, don't don't lie to your fans, but at the same time, though, don't don't tell them, you know, that your game sucks. You know, just I mean, don't lie to them essentially. I'm just saying, like, you know, tell them that you're gonna make a game. That's going to be something that they want. Give your fans what they want. Never, never anything else. And they'll be happy. Number ten is don't give up. Just, just, just don't give up. Because if you don't give up, you can make any game possible. You just got to figure out what people haven't done yet and just do it. So, you know, comment, rate, subscribe, favorite, share this video, help people out. Send everybody you know. Hopefully this advice helped you out.